poetry analysis is due on March 26th by noon um, to Dr. Johnson, to me, via email. I thought I would give you a quick library refresher of, uh, so you can search for these sources. Some of you, by the way, have already turned this in, but everyone's going to have to do three of these over the course of the semester. Each one is worth 10% of your grade, so you need to be able to find these sources. And so these are things you learned um, in 101 and probably had refreshed for you in 102. I want to go over them now so that you, uh, you and I, I can feel like you have had some help with it, <laughs> finding information. Google, as you, I hope you know very well, can get you access to about 15% of the information there is out there. It is only through databases with more specific information that you can get the other 85%. And because you are at LaGuardia, um, you have access to those databases. And so I want to uh, make sure that you're using them and you have um, using information that will help you write these. So um, on your on the main LaGuardia page, uh, you can select the library in the top right corner. It's easy to get to. And the first thing it will take you to is this page here. Um, they highlight one search. Uh, because they find it to be the easiest thing for students to use. It's supposed to access multiple databases. So um, I certainly would encourage you to try that first. That's a place to try. And this is what happens when I do that. I typed in the name Sappho and um, it came up with a bunch of listings. So I tried to limit it to only the online listings because that's what I'm going to be able to access at this point. And um, I think what happened is, oh, and so here's uh, one that I chose. And so I chose it to limit to the full text online, and so it limited, it didn't have the same number of um, results, but I still had plenty of things to work with. Here's the problem. When I looked through this, um, this one that I circled, I opened it up, and in fact, what it says here, you can't read very well, but um, it just says that you, it, it's some essential quotations. So that's not very helpful in my discussion of Sappho. So I didn't want that information at all. Um, not helpful. And then the texts around it also weren't very helpful. <laughs> so um, that's generally what I have found with OneSearch, is that though it is, it's immediately up there and the library thinks it's the easiest way to find things, it has not been the most helpful when I've tried to find things for my classes for literature. Um, but I will tell you that regardless of what you do, you're going to have to log into the database again to get access to this other 85% of what is out there. You're going to have to log in and it tells you right here um, what your login should be and you shouldn't have any problem. I'm hoping none of you at this level will have a problem with that. Um, but because, as I told you, I had problems, this is really the only thing, it was none of the search things they came up with were very helpful, at least the first 10 that I looked through. So instead I went back to do a new search, so I'm showing you that this is easy to click on and find, uh, start a new search here. And then when I go back, what I'm looking for is uh, this, right? I'm looking for um, the articles. I want to find articles or the databases. I want access to those. And then um, here is the one we're going to start with. I find this the most helpful one is the Gale Virtual Reference Library. It's like encyclopedias, a bunch of encyclopedias that are accessed. And so they pay people to write these up. They have a, more expertise than you would find, more credentials than you would find people writing on Wikipedia. So you click on that there, and then um, that will take you here. Gale Books, eBooks, that's a new name, by the way, um, instead of the virtual reference library. So you could just type in here what anything that you wanted to, and this shows you the second half of this page over here, um, where there are specific things like you can just limit your, you can say you only want to search through their general reference or their history or their literature. Those are the three areas I think that we would most likely want to use. So um, I, I did a search of 
and this I typed in Sappho, right, because that's the example I have for you of a poetry analysis. So I typed that in, and they had already for me suggestion of the Greek poet, which was nice to limit it. And then this is the first thing that came up. It has 74 results, so not bad at all. I don't want thousands. That doesn't help me. Um, and I don't want two because that's not very helpful. Um, this is a good number. And over here, this is what the page looks like. And it's very nice because it gives you all this information. And of course, I can't scroll down to show you, but there's a ton of information there. I put this as my title here, 16 pages, because this is 16 pages in this particular reference, which is called Poetry for Students. This is where Gail has paid um, literary professors to go in, and several of them probably, um, to go in and do a lot of research. So what you'll find is an overview of the poem. You'll have some um, biographical information, and then you'll have, they'll talk about the poem line by line, and then they'll talk about themes. I mean, it's just extensive. And so there, in this particular article, there are 16 pages all about this one poem, the one that you and I talked about. And I pointed this out specifically because it is not something that I found when I was originally searching. So I did not have access to this wonderful article about um, this particular poem, He Seems to Be a God. Um, I had to rely on basic information about Sappho um, to do my, uh, my page, which is fine. I'm a big girl. I could do that. Um, anyway, so this is um, what you can find from the Gale eBooks, and so I think it's our your your best shot um, of, at a reference library. Um, the second one I want to go here is oh oh I'm sorry, the second category is history because remember at one point it asked for some historical background to put the list at least five major um, events that happened around the time of the publication of the poem so that we can get a sense of where the writer was right dealing with the historical moments, um, literary moments, true, but also what's happening in people's lives at the time that might have influenced the poem. So you can go back here to ebooks. You could even click on specifically history, but I wrote, I typed in, my search term was Greek history. And so I found all kinds of, I think I put, I, I circled this because look at how many references results. There were just too many, and I'm going to have to narrow that, obviously. So you'll need to maybe type in, you know, Greek history before this time, because that's when Sappho was writing. She wrote, what was it, 750 BC? So you can limit your search in that way. You don't want over 4,000 results. That's just too much. Okay, so then after the Gale eBooks, the next, if you go back to your search list, again, to the articles and books online via database, I just go to the alphabetical listing because the next database I'd like you to look at, I suggest, is called JSTOR. So just go to the J's, click on this, and this is what the result page will look like. JSTOR comes up here. It just means the journal st storage. I think this is the second most helpful um, reference that you can use, reference database. I, I think it is very helpful, but here's the problem. It The reason I think it's the second most helpful is because the audience is different than it is for the Gale eBooks. The Gale eBooks, um, it's a company that's writing for college students, that kind of level of reading, you know, late high school, early college students. Um, basic information, higher reading level, yes, but basic information still, and communicating that in basic terms. Whereas the information you will find in the journal storage comes from academic journals. And academic journals are written by people with PhDs for people with PhDs, right? So, sorry, I just lost us there. Um, when I typed in Sappho, right, that was just my search term, very general. I came up with 17,000. Again, too many, too many. So you're going to limit it in some way to maybe just journals or book chapters, that kind of thing. Um, first, let me mention that you're getting access through LaGuardia, so at some point, again, you're going to have to sign in, like I showed you the sign-in page earlier. Um, you only have to sign in once, so when I signed in to get to my Gale book reference, it lets me use that same sign-in to get to JSTOR, but every time I have a new session, I have to log into that. I wanted you to be aware of that. So you're going to limit your searches in some ways, um, again, because 17,000 is just too much. Um, and so 
one other way you can do is say, oh, you know, I don't want anything published before 2000. That's a great way to limit things. The thing with literature, especially literature that was written in 750 BC, is that you may not want, you know, to limit it so much. I found that um, reading only the information about Sappho that critics had written um, since 2000, though, was very interesting because the way we have looked at Sappho has changed so dramatically over the years since the time when I was educated in the um, late 80s and early 90s. It's changed so much. Um, that was really interesting. So you may not want to limit or you may, anyway, create some kind of limitation. This is the source that I ended up using so heavily um, for my particular report. So I wanted to show you, uh, this is what it looks like when you open it up. And I put this as my headline read online because you can. You can download it for sure, but you can also just read it directly there so you don't have to use the space anywhere. Um, I just read it online. I thought that was really um, helpful. It gives me all kinds of information. And again, the publication date, which uh, 2000, is that 2010? I really can't see where it's, and I have my glasses on. Mm, suspicious. Okay. So I just found, uh, and by the way, with these articles written for people with PhDs, right? So what academics write for each other, people with PhDs publishing for other people with PhDs, um, the language might be a little more difficult and have a lot more specific information. I skim them. I invite you to skim them, but they will have more specific good information in them. Um, but here's what we do on that same page. You'll see this is how we cite, right? You click on this button here and it brings up this right here and we do MLA and you just click on this button to copy and then paste it somewhere in somewhere in the writing assignment. I say, or in the announcements, I say, you can do a works cited page. That would be lovely at the end of your poetry analysis. I did footnotes. That's what my example did. You could do end notes. All of them just please give me the information. That's the thing I want is I want to know where you got your information. If you go into Google and do a Google search, first of all, you won't find very much specific information. You'll find super general things. Um, however, whatever it is, I want you to cite that source, right? Might not be as credible as, won't be as credible as these sources, but please just cite it. Um, all right. So to review, and that's right. This is it. Go to the library page, go under articles, which are the databases. Your first choice is the Gale virtual reference library or Gale eBooks. It has general information. The audience is college students. For the journal storage, JSTOR, it's much more specific, but the audience is college professors, so it may not be as easy to read. Those are your two best bets. Um, I think that I'm hoping this will help you to do um, more specific, helpful, um, have get specific, helpful information for your poetry analysis that are due on Thursday. Um, as always, contact me via email if you have any questions.